Hello dear students, hope you are doing good, okay? So here we are starting our balloon problems in motion in one dimension. So the first question is in front of you. I hope you could see the question. Go through the question. The question states that a balloon was moving upward with a uniform velocity of 10 meter per second. An object of finite mass is dropped from the balloon when it was at a height of 75 meter from the ground level okay the height of the balloon from the ground okay when the object strikes the ground is so it's a very good question actually okay so i will explain the question uh, with more detail this we can resolve this question this type of questions balloon questions in two ways i will explain both the method okay so before that i will explain some of the fundamentals that is happening with this type of questions okay now the most important fundamental you should understand here is actually so let me say this is my balloon okay so this is my balloon okay how is it looking like okay. yeah so this is my balloon and some part when this balloon is moving upward so to show that it is moving upward i will put some uh, uh, arrows like this okay so this shows that this balloon is moving upward okay so this is moving upward okay clear now in most of the question they will say like that the balloon is moving upward and they say that when it is moving upward maybe here i will explain with the same case here they says that it is moving with a uniform velocity of 10 meter per second what does that mean it means that it is moving with a constant velocity of 10 meter per second so this is the speed of the balloon with which it is moving it is not an accelerated motion very very important so uniform velocity means constant velocity that means the velocity is not going to change if the velocity does not changes then the acceleration is zero okay so it is moving with this particular constant velocity so at that point of time let us say there is stone or packet or anything whatever be it they are dropping from the balloon okay so i am putting it like this okay now let me say this is my ground okay so this is my ground okay this is my ground now in this particular question they are clearly mentioning that an object of finest mass is dropped from the balloon when it was at a height of 75 meter so they are clearly stating that this height when this was dropped the height with which the balloon already raised is around 75 meter okay how much it is 75 meter okay now all these things are given in the question now let us assume what is basically happening here so let me say that when a phenomenon happens like this i may say that you this when this stone was initially present with in the balloon so when the balloon is moving in the upward direction when the balloon is moving in the upward direction uh, then the stone is also having 10 meter per second as the speed similar to when we are traveling in the bus even though we are sitting at rest in the bus but since the bus is moving at some speed we are also moving correct so similarly this balloon this balloon is also at some at a speed of uh, sorry this stone is also at a speed of 10 meter per second okay now when this is dropped what is happening this will move initially with a speed of 10 meter per second in the upward direction this is very very important so i can say that when it is moving or when it is left from the balloon initially it will have a speed of u is equal to 10 meter per second this is the most important fundamental you should remember okay so whenever anything is dropped from a moving object that object will have the speed that initial object has okay so this is having a 10 meter per second speed then what will happen to the balloon the balloon will move initially with the 10 meter per second okay let me say 10 meter per second then it will reach some height and thereafter its velocity will become zero and then it will go in the downward direction and touch the ground correct okay so i will uh, make it a rub and will put it in a neat way for you to get a clear idea okay so it's like this okay <laughs> okay somehow it is not that neat then i will find an alternate method i will put it like this initially 
okay then we will put a u like this so it is moving like this getting in the top and then it is joining here like this now we can trace its path very easily so it will move in this direction it will reach the top then it starts moving down then moving down then finally to the ground like this is how it will grow then what happens to this stone that's what i am going to tell okay so initially we know that this stone will have a speed of u is equal to 10 meter per second it will have a speed of 10 meter per second now its speed decreases 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 why it is decreasing because acceleration due to gravity is acting in the downward direction now a point reach the topmost point its velocity will become equal to zero then what will happen again its velocity keeps on increasing 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 and exactly at the same point where it is started moving upward it will attain the same velocity of 10 meter per second then again the velocity keeps on increasing 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 and then it strikes the ground this is how it is happening okay so please remember so here it is having 10 meter per second at this point and when it goes down decreases and again increases and at the same height and at the same height it will become 10 meter per second okay and please remember in this type of motion the time of ascent time of ascent means the time required for it to reach the topmost point so the one thing i marked in blue color this is called time of ascent this is called time of ascent okay it is called time of ascent and this time of ascent will be equal to please remember this time of ascent will be equal to time of descent it will be equal to time of descent descent means at the point where it started so the time taken for moving from this point to this particular topmost point okay will be equal to the time taken from here to the same point okay so this is one fundamental you should understand okay so time of ascent will be always equal to time of descent okay so this is one method or this one approach with which we can solve the question and there is another method also i will explain both okay so this is one of the fundamental so i hope you understood the scenario of the question now we will try to see how to solve this question okay so we learned that time of ascent will be equal to time of descent and we also learned that whenever it is moving so at this point it is having some velocity when it goes like this and when it reaches the same height here it will have the same velocity as the initial one okay if it is moving with a 10 initially then at this point also it will have 10 okay until this i hope it is clear for you now let's explain the methodology one the method one i have uh, put it but i will explain it so let us assume this is our balloon this is the question i am telling so it is moving up with 10 meter per second you can see it is moving up with 10 meter per second and we know that when it, the height becomes 75 meter when the height becomes 75 meter what is happening a stone or a ball or anything it is dropped or it is dropped so when it is dropped don't put initially its velocity u is equal to zero don't put it like that because this is already moving with 10 meter per second so this stone will also have initially 10 meter per second okay i will zoom it for you to understand okay so this will have u is equal to 10 meter per second so as i explained what it will do it will go 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 and even it will reach the top at that point its velocity will become equal to zero again it will come down velocity increases 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 and at this particular point its velocity will become equal to again 10 meter per second correct so what i am trying to do is i am going to divide this entire motion into three path so a to B you can see here I am uh, going to explain that listen listen okay so I am going to see the show that so this is our ball the point where it is dropped okay this is our ball and we know that this height this height is 75 meter I told you and from here the ball started moving 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 and it reached the top so this pathway I call it as a B 
okay this is my ab pathway and from there the velocity keeps on increasing 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 and it reaches the same height at, at which it started moving up so that that pathway is called c then i say bc is my that pathway okay then we have the last one from c to d okay so i have divided the entire movement into three part and as i already explained this time required for this to reach the topmost point from here it is called time of ascent okay and from topmost point to the point where it started moving up that is called the time required for that is called time of descent this will be always equal this will be always equal and also we know that at this particular point the velocity will be same as the starting velocity that is 10 meter per second now let's try to do that from a to b I am starting to do it so I am applying the equation v is equal to u plus a t okay so my I am going to apply the equation v is equal to u plus a t now please understand I am going to assign sign convention so we know that when it reaches the top its velocity becomes zero final velocity so I am putting final velocity as zero and I know that it is moving in the upward direction so as per sign convention we know that this is our quadrant okay so anything moving in the upward direction uh, we will take that as positive anything moving in the downward direction we will take it as negative anything moving in the right hand uh, right side we will take it as positive and anything moving in this direction we will take it as negative okay but usually in our case we need the up uh, moving up and moving down in this type of questions okay so here you can see velocity is in which direction it is initially in the upward direction you can see that it is in the upward direction so that's why u i am taking it as positive okay now we know that u v is equal to u plus a t and acceleration here always in the uh, upward motion we know that acceleration due to gravity g is always in the downward direction always it is in the downward direction so downward direction means i will put minus g okay then i have the time required for that let us assume for a to b i am assuming the time required is t1 is t1 okay now i have substituted the value 0 and u i have kept it as initial value 10 meter per second minus g i am taking it as 10 and the time required for that i am taking it as t1 okay now on calculation 10 t1 is equal to 10 10 so time t1 will be equal to one second so i understood that from here to here from here a to b the time needed is one second okay we know that time of ascent is equal to time of descent so from b to c also if it needs to come down it will take how much time one second only so this is a fundamental okay so I am uh, explaining that here when a ball is thrown upwards with a particular velocity its time of ascent will be equal to time of descent. So I can say that from here to here it is one second then from here to that particular height again it is one second. So in that considering that as the concept I can say from B to C. So here this is the part I am putting it here this is my B and this is my c so b to c so b to c what is happening from b to c listen b to c so i put the time as t2 which is equal to one second okay i hope until this it is clear now we have calculated t1 t2 and the final time we need to calculate is from c to d okay the c to d is c is this point i am again splitting the pathway c and this is my t now you tell me from c to d what is happening sir so from c to d i need to calculate the time t3 what is the time needed we know that at this point when it comes it will have a speed of 10 meter per second and this 10 meter per second in what direction downward direction and we know that since the displacement from here to here i am taking it in the downward direction or the displacement when uh, the balloon was here so Oh, actually it is at a height of 75 meters so it is downward so i can say that the displacement during this part is minus s okay because we are measuring it in the downward direction 
okay so minus s is equal to minus ut why minus ut because the velocity in the downward direction so minus ut3 minus half gt why minus is coming again here because g always act in the downward direction g always act in the downward direction so minus half gt3 square now i am putting s is equal to we know the distance so s is equal to 75 meter so minus 75 u we know 10 so it is minus 10 it will come minus 10 t3 and 2 uh, 1 by 2 into 10 t3 square so it will come around minus 5 t cube t, uh, t3 the whole square okay so i am rearranging it it will become 5 t3 square plus 10 t3 minus 75 equal to 0 i hope until this it is clear now again it's a quadratic equation so we know that uh, i am dividing the entire term with 5 so 5 divided by 5 this will become 1 and here also i am dividing by 5 it will become 2 here also i am dividing by 5 then this will become 15 now you think we need the product as minus 15 so that would be 5 into 3 so minus 15 means what should i do 5 into minus 3 and the sum if i am taking sum if i am taking i will get plus 2 so that's why 5 t3 minus what i am doing 3 t3 so the difference will be 2 you will get and the product would be minus 15 so just to factorize it t3 take t3 common here minus 3 common so you will get two solutions but please understand time can only have positive values so this t3 plus 5 is equal to 0 is an not a possible value so from this i will get t3 is equal to 3 second so now we know what is the time needed for the entire motion so for the entire motion from here it is one second and here also it would be one second and here what is the time it is three second now you calculate it this is one second this is one second two second and this is three second so totally five seconds is required for the entire motion that is what shown here now why we have calculated the time for all the movements because you go through the question again the question states that please 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 the question states that they are asking you the height of the balloon from the ground when the object strikes the ground now we calculated what is the time that is required for the object to, uh, to start from the balloon and strike the ground so during this time the balloon might have moved from this position to maybe this position correct so i calculated that time so now i know that time so that time is how much tell me sir 5 second so during this time the balloon is moving with a constant velocity so i can say it is not an accelerated motion okay so in that case how much distance the balloon might have moved if it is not an accelerated motion we know that if anything is not an accelerated motion we use the concept distance is equal to speed into time you might be knowing it so i will put the speed of the balloon is 10 meter per second into the time 5 second so i can say during that period of time the balloon might have moved from this particular spot okay so this particular spot from the, this particular spot it might have moved to this particular spot so already it is at 75 meter now it is moving from here to here that is 50 meter so how much distance the balloon is from the ground i can say that is 75 plus 125 that is 125 meter 70 plus 50 125 meter that is what they are asking in the question listen so in the question what they are asking they are asking the height of the balloon from the ground when the object strikes the ground when the object is striking the ground it has traveled from here to here three seconds uh, total five seconds so during that period of time the balloon has moved a meter of 50 meter and it is already at 75 meter so if you add it you will get the total height of the balloon from the ground that is 125 meter okay so i hope you understood the question in a clear way this is one method of doing this is a very uh, what i could say very lengthy method but it's easy to understand the mechanics of this motion and next we have the easiest method that is the most easiest one so in easiest method what we do is we consider we will consider only the displacement actually okay so displacement means we know that uh, for this particular 
stone okay its displacement means what from the initial this is the initial position and this is my final position so displacement is always how much then 75 so i can directly put here minus 75 okay and you you can say in what direction it is moving it is moving in the upward direction you can easily see okay initial movement it is in the upward direction so i will take it as positive so ut then g will be always downward direction then minus half into 10 then it will become 5 t square so this time is actually the time needed for this to move from this displacement so what is this time that is the most important thing students should know this time is the time required for this displacement to happen it is not the distance from here to here it is the time needed for this displacement so once i know that time you will get actually the same answer that is the most important thing so if you do it you can see here minus 75 okay here u is 10 okay minus 5t square so if you factorize it and do it you will get the same 5 second that is the most what i could say exciting thing so if you do it in the other method also you will get like from here up to here one second then from here to here another one second and then from here to here three second okay so in directly you can apply the displacement technique to get the time you don't need to divide the motion into three half and all that is the advantage of this technique so we will use this technique in the next questions next incoming questions so the technique is very simple you consider displacement everything in the vector form the entire equation in the vector form so s will become instead of distance it will become displacement so we calculated the displacement is 75 meter this u will be in that case what is the initial velocity and its direction so that is i know 10 meter per second and it is in the upward direction so that's why i taken it as positive then g will be always in the downward direction so it will be negative and the time t will be that is the time required for this displacement to happen okay so i have got the answer as 5 second again we can do it in the same way the balloon is moving with a uniform velocity so we know that it is not an accelerated motion so in this 5 second what is the distance traveled by the balloon it would be 10 into 5 50 meters so already balloon is 75 meters from the ground and when the stone strikes the ground it has elapsed another how much second 5 second so during that 5 second it has traveled another 50 meter and totally the distance traveled will become for the balloon it becomes 125 meter i hope the concept is clear for you if you have any doubt feel free to comment on the comment box thank you